Hello, my name is Tragic O'Hara. Remember during the summer when I had that, you know, this is what I wanted. Like that I was struggling, basically. Like that whole bit, I made a video about it. I can now tell you the story, right? 2020, it kind of all started then. So I got a commission to do community work, basically, which is what I do. And it was working with the community of Inverclyde, Greenock to ask them about whether or not they wanted public art, right? It was a big thing, it's called Creative Conversations, is what the project was called. If you wanted a PowerPoint presentation, you probably wouldn't have got me involved, right? <laughs> so, I'm just gonna make it the way I make any other video, just like this. And I partnered with an organisation, Rig Arts, in Greenock. Uh, and the whole thing was like funded by Sustrans, Inverclyde Council, Heritage Lottery, Transport Scotland, like there was lo lots of organisations and stuff, right? Like I'd n I've never gotten anything like that, ever. Like see when it comes to anything that goes out on the, for public tender, I, I never get them. I don't get them. I don't speak that language particularly well. Like I speak like this. <laughs> so I don't usually get it, right? But I got this one. So that commission paid f for here. Like you remember that video I made about moving out of the garage? Seven years in a garage and then in my mum's, the bedroom at my mum's house, all that time before that. Like that was the commission that got me, gave me the money that basically I could pay this place up front for a year. Like that's what it was, right? And it was amazing, but it was all about public art. And then phase two came out, right? And it went back up for tender. So like I sat, me and Rig got together, like Karen from Rig, who's great. Like we get together and we spoke about it. We said, I'll oh, put another bid in and see if we can get the next bit, right? And again, it was like, I was doing the community stuff. Like I would talk to the community again and find out some of the ideas that they wanted to do and then hand it over to artists that were identi identified by Rig that could make a stuff and all that, right? We went for it and we got it again. Like, brilliant. Now there was three sculptures, past, present and future. And that's what the community had identified. Like we got folk for the past and the present. Good guys that have done stuff before, right? But we really struggled with uh, trying to find someone that does to do the future, right? There was a few people kind of asked and stuff, but no one was really kind of coming forward. So I struggled with this big time. Like actually thinking maybe I could give this a go, right? Like struggled with this big time. <laughs> Because like, I know nothing about this stuff. Nothing, I've never made a sculpture in my life, right? But I came up with this idea, right? Just, uh, in fact, I came up with an idea that was ludicrous. Probably because I just wanted to see what would happen if I said something stupid, right? Because I don't really take myself seriously. The thing the community were looking for was something to do with climate. So I thought if I was het, if it was me that was het to solve the energy crisis, what would I do, right? <laughs> Now, the only thing I know about energy like that, like renewable energy, is like a, the dynamo on a bike. You cycle a bike and like it powers a thing. A dynamo, I think, I don't know. And then the light goes. That's how little I know about this stuff, right? And the light goes. That's all I could think of. So I thought, what if I put a big pair of robot legs? <laughs> With a propeller on the back. So what happens is the wind hits the propeller, it cycles the big... <laughs> cycles the big robot legs, which then powers a dynamo. It makes a light go at the front. And I drew this up. Not only did I draw it up, I put it in my book, right? And I drew it all out, I animated it. I actually, I made a video about a, like my, uh, the National Galleries. Again, like I still can't believe that I'm doing stuff with these, with, with them. Like they said, uh, could you make a video about your process for young people so that they can see what it's like to think? That's it, that's it there. That's like the whole sketch. That's all it is, two pages, came into my head. Someone was talking to me about a sculpture. That's it in there. So eventually that sculpture turned into that animation just because I wanted to see how it moved, how you go about thinking about stuff. I've never done that. I never thought about the way I think. Right, ever. I put it in that video and I and I called it I called the whole thing plan B, right? Because I thought <laughs> that's obviously a plan B. We should probably listen to someone like Elon Musk and <laughs> not me, right? Let them do plan A, but if it doesn't work out, I've got a plan B, I've got it sorted, don't worry about it. So I kinda pitched it and they laughed. Like but because it's funny, it's stupid, right? What they didn't do is they never laughed at me, they laughed. The idea was funny, but they were like, it'd be really difficult to do. There's lots of moving parts in it. There's probably quite a lot of things that could go wrong. 
sort of thing. And I was listening to the other artists that have been like that are doing the sculptures. Like I took their advice because I was like, they know more about this stuff than I do, right? But as I was driving home from Greenock, it kind of dawned on me. I was like, they never said no. Like they didn't go, no, there's no way we are letting you loose. <laughs> On this thing, there's no way, no chance will we let, like it wasn't that reaction, it was, that's a really hard kind of thing, but like I, I think, come up with something else. So I went away and I thought, because no one was I like, coming out and saying, oh we've got this person, we've got this person, so I was kind of in the back burner trying to try to convince myself that maybe I should give this thing a go, right? So I went away and I made that fourth dimension video, remember that fourth dimension video? I don't know what the fourth dimension is, I started talking about bees. If we were wiped off the face of the earth tomorrow, the rest of the species on the planet would probably get on fine without us. There would be cows and stuff like, no, like, no, we, like the, the animals that we are breeding to eat would just, can, they would just do their thing. I think that's what they would do and it would find a balance again. It wouldn't be as catastrophic to the rest of the universe as it would be to just our species. Whereas bees, like if bees just disappeared tomorrow, we'd need to deal with that, like straight away. <laughs> because then, like that, that's, that's a big thing if the bees disappear. Because if we don't have the bees, then we don't have the plants. And if we don't have the plants, there's no animals to eat the plants. And the whole thing falls down. And a bee, bees like this doesn't pay council tax. Just a bee. And that's what I was thinking. And I was just ranting at the camera, right? We need to stop everything and deal with the bee thing. Which led me down this other path, right? And this is another thing that I've never done. I've never allowed myself to go this way, right, because it's really kind of arty, and I've got an attitude problem when it comes to stuff like that, like, it reeks of effort, so if it reeks of effort, like, I kind of don't, it's, sh it's so stupid, man, right, but I've never done it, but then I, I quite like this idea of mechanical bees, and it reminded me of Black Mirror, like, that ep episode of Black Mirror, well, the, I don't want to ruin it for anyone if you've never seen it, but there's an episode of Black Mirror where it's like bees, the mechanical bees, like we drone bee things, right? I went away and I started drawing mechanical insects and I started doing stuff like that. I don't, and I've never done it before. I've never allowed myself to go down that bit where it's like, I'm going to go and... It's the horrible, pretentious manner of it. Like, I'm going to go and explore uh, insects and drawing insects and mechanical, I don't, I, I just, I can't talk about that, I just feel, it doesn't feel right for me to talk like that, right, so, I, I've never done that sort of thing, because, like, I've never, I'm j I, I don't know, I can't, I can't explain it, I just don't allow myself to do that sort of stuff, right, but this time I kind of did, and I started drawing, there's nothing big, like, it's not, that's the strange thing about the whole thing, it's not like a big, massive, like, I'm, I don't know, like, I'm gonna not eat for six months or something, do you know what I mean, I, like, disappear into the, off grid, like it just, I don't know, I just, I don't, I've never allowed myself to do it because it seems too real of a thing, it seems like a very arty thing to do and I'm not into that whole, I use the colour blue to represent the plight of the working man thing, like I don't get it, right, I don't, and I, so, but this time I did, right, and I'm kind of glad I did, but then it, so I started drawing mechanical insects and stuff and like different animals and just stuff like just because i was still in this micro dance thing that i was doing right like i was trying i was thinking about it too much that's what the problem was i was thinking about it too much which again is the same thing <laughs> same thing i just don't i don't know I, there's a bit of me that thinks that i shouldn't be doing stuff like this like it's like it's bad i came up with an idea when we done the first phase of the, the creative conversations thing i was talking about when we done the first phase one of the community were talking about jellyfish and how they love jellyfish and they drew a jellyfish and stuff that'd be cool what if i made big metal robotic jellyfish <laughs> that light up at night like you attach a solar panel and you put leds in it and they light up at night and they change colors and they're, but they're like so during the day there are these kind of just big robotic things and then at night they change color and they turn into something completely different right it's, and i thought what if i done that so i kind of drew up a couple of things. I pitched it to the people that were involved in the project and they were like, great, I, you should do that. Now as I'm saying that, right, to get to that point of jellyfish, it took ages of trying to, but the most important, the thing that I had to fight the most was me, was me saying, you can't, you can't do that, what do you know about this? Like seriously, I've never welded. I know nothing about metalwork. I know nothing about LEDs. I, I have never done any sort of planning permission stuff. I've never done anything like this. Nothing, not a thing. There is nothing. Maybe the Santa thing that I've done. The the I 
could draw a parallel to, but it wasn't permanent. The Santa thing, like this thing will be there forever, this thing. I've never done it before, never done anything like it before. I, and I, I basically said, yeah, I'll give it, I can do this. I know exactly what I'm doing, I'll figure it out. Flying through my teeth. <laughs> I had a battle with a lot of things, right? It's where this self-belief switch came from. Cause that's that on now. So it's not happening again, okay? <laughs> that's where that came from, cause I kept Telling myself, I don't know how you gonna. I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do this. I don't. And I, and I was talking myself out of it. For the minute they said yes, I started trying to talk myself out of it. Honestly, what do I know about stuff like that? I'm not a sculptor. I've not. I've not got an art degree. That came up quite a lot. <laughs> that came up quite a lot. I've not got an art degree. What do I know about this? I'm an imposter. And I ended up making this self belief switch, right, and switching it on, and it helped. It helped because now any time that I got lost, I would kind of look at it, right, and I got lost a few times, right, because the first thing I had to do is try and get some sort of plans through planning, which was so, man, I don't know, eh, there's got that, so there's a recurring theme, I know nothing, so what I done was, I uh, got square paper, this is the only way I could think about doing it, right, I'd, and I got a huge big bit of graph paper, and I just drew it with a ruler and counted out the squares. And I drew these blueprints. Like essentially it's just a big kind of jellyfish blueprint. But the, one of the main reasons I kind of said yes is because like rig have been a great help because like they have helped me with everything they can help me with. The other artists, Jason Orr and Alan Potter, gave me loads of help because like Alan sent me a, when I told him about the lamppost thing, he sent me these documents that he had that a, a council in England put out for when they're putting lampposts in the ground, like all their safety stuff and like how everything needs to sit and the depth of the concrete and all that kind of thing. And he said, go and speak to a structural engineer. They'll help you out with any sort of stuff. So like I did have a lot. Of, I, I would have never have done it if I was totally by myself. I knew I had people that could help me, which was one of the main, and they were willing to help me like that. So I drew this whole thing out and I photographed it and I imported it into my computer and I drew around it in Illustrator and I made a thing that would look that I thought would look like plans if, of someone that knows what they're doing. <laughs> it took a while, but I got planning permission. I couldn't believe it. I got, I actually, they, they, they looked at this and went, yeah, that's totally fine. Yeah, go and make that. <laughs> no idea, no idea how it happened. Like, I don't know. I, I I genuinely don't. So, that was problem one. The other problem I had was this. I don't know how to weld. I don't know how to weld. Like, I don't know any of that stuff. None whatsoever. I don't actually need to know everything, right? I just need to have the idea and find people that know what they're doing and get them to do that, that stuff. Do you know what I mean? Like, I can do that with them. I can be there and, and do that. Which is what I found out a lot of sculptors, sculptures, sculptors, sculptors, sculptors. What a lot of sculptors do is, like, they don't make it. Like they pay someone else, they come up with the idea and then they pay someone else to make it. And I was like, that's a thing. You can, like, you could do I thought everybody made their own thing. Like, I, do you know what I mean? So I, and then, but, so I didn't know, I, I didn't have a fabricator. I didn't have a structural engineer. And I didn't have, I did have a lighting guy because I've got my mate Drew. Now my, my mate Drew has got a company called Arc who do loads of cool lighting stuff, right? I, I've known Drew for years. Me and Drew get together and talk about the fourth dimension and the universe and all that sort of stuff and Pink Floyd and the Beatles and it's great, right? So I, I know I've got Drew. Structural engineer, right? I phoned three people. Three people, I wish I had this in film, right? The first person I filmed, basically, I said, oh, hello, how you doing? My name's Tragic O'Hara. And the guy basically said, I'm just too busy for this, mate. Didn't even let me finish <laughs> what I was saying. I'm just too busy and hung up the phone. And that was it. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> how am I going to? That's the first person I phoned. Then I phoned another two companies who basically like patched me. Everybody's busy, right? This COVID thing. Everyone's dealing with their own fallout from that. So eventually I just put it in Facebook and I was like, does anybody know a structural engineer? And funny enough, Sam, who helped me make the Santa, his sister's a structural engineer, Hannah. It's so funny how this stuff works, right? So I... Uh, got in contact with Hannah and I sent her my plans and she looked over them and she, she actually helped me at the planning bit before they went into planning, like had written a wee kind of spiel for me and stuff. And But I still needed a fabricator, right? Now this is the bit where the, the it started to hit the fan a bit because I did have someone that was going to fabricate it. But then 
some stuff happened and I didn't have a fabricator anymore. There was a deadline attached to this, right? So it had to be finished by this date and the date was six weeks away. Right in the middle of the summer. And I didn't ha I had a fabricator that I didn't have a fabricator for whatever reason, right? And then the prices of all the materials went up. Everything. Either because of COVID or because of Brexit. Regardless of how you vote, I, I don't really care how you vote. But it, that had an adverse effect on the price of materials. Then there was an HGV driver shortage, so you couldn't get anything delivered in time for the thing that was going up. And there was other things that I can't really, they're not my, it's not my story to tell, the other things. But that's what happened, and I could not get failure out of my head. Couldn't get it out of my head at all. Could not shake this feeling of not being able to do this. There was also other pressures, like, this is, not that I want to talk about money, but this is the most money I have ever been trusted with. <laughs> ever. While I'm trying to make this thing happen, I'm looking at the money and the money's getting spent on things that I don't know if it's actually going to happen. And then I start thinking, how am I going to pay this back? Like, if I can't do this, how do I pay this back? Like, how do I then turn around to people and go, I can't do this? When there's six weeks left to go, it, there was it just the pressure just properly got to me. Pick, 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 and I was living in my head. Things had to change, like a lot of stuff had to change. For example, I just stopped making videos. I just stopped. See my book, stopped working on it. For me to do this, everything else had to get the sound turned down because every time I tried to do something else, a new problem would appear. Like the solar panels won't fit the thing. The batteries are too big for the inside of the pole. All this stuff, right? And that's just with the solar thing. Like there's stuff I can't really tell you about because it's not my story. It's not my story. All I can tell you is like, I had loads of problems, man. Like it was just like problem after problem after problem. How am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? And I kept, kept thinking about how it wasn't going to happen. That was like, so I, it was just so big. It was just so big. And it was like, one of the, the first thing I had to do was find a new fabricator, find someone that was willing to make this thing. In six weeks, in six weeks, convince someone to make robotic jellyfish that light up at night that sit on top of five meter poles with a guy with who's a, who, who walks about calling himself a professional walrus chaser. I had to convince someone <laughs> that this was a good day. And here's my problem, right? So eventually, right, I got a hold of a guy, Chris, through my dad. And Chris was like, I'm mega, mega busy, but I can help you put the poles in. But I know a guy, his name's Davey. It's been peaks and troughs. This is one of the peaks, right? This is one of the bits I was at the bottom and I, I kind of made my way back up to the top and then came crashing down again. And it, Cause it has, it's just been like this the whole time, right? He said, you need to go meet him, he's in Falkirk. And I was like, I'm in Falkirk. I was painting the Fourth Valley Sensory Centre in Falkirk, making these phone calls in between try to work. Cause I've still had to work. Like it's not like I've been able to go, I'm doing nothing but this sculpture for six months. Like I've had all my other jobs and hundreds of other stuff to do in between this, which is probably why the, that's why the video stuff and the book stuff and all the other things that I really want to do had to take a back seat because I couldn't do them. I couldn't do them and this at the same time, which was annoying me because one of the other things was I'm looking at my, my the numbers. I'm looking at that horrible algorithm number thing and going, oh, I've not posted anything for a while. And I kind of had to make peace with and so that's it. Who ca I can't care about that. Then now I need to think about this thing, right? So I drove round and I met Davy, and Davy's like, "I'll help you make jellyfish. I'm up for that, right?" So then we kind of started moving forward a bit, and then we had another couple of hurdles, and it just it's been hard, man. But basically, I had a structural engineer who helped me get it through planning, Hannah, Davy, who's made the actual sculptures like i went up and like made them out of wire and masking tape i was like i think they should look like this and davy was like right cool and he started making his thing right but eventually it got to the point of this right i had to stop and seriously go i'm looking at this whole thing wrong right i'm looking at this as art <laughs> this is what i had to do in my head to make this manageable right you're looking at this as if it's art right it's not art it's not art right it's a lampshade with legs. <laughs> That's what I had to tell myself. It's a lampshade with legs. That's it. That's all it is, right? 
It's nothing special. It's nothing that's going to change life as we know it, right? It's just a lampshade with legs, right? And I had to keep telling myself this when I was... Because I had like three panic attacks over this and I haven't slept right for months. Half past three, I woke up this morning thinking about these jellyfish. Constantly thinking about it. I've dreamt about jellyfish for months, right? It's been hard, very hard. Anyone that's my friend knows because all I've done is phone them, right? I'll tell you what the hardest thing in the whole thing was, was this, right? I nearly missed my friend's wedding. Like, a, f a friend who I have known for decades, I nearly missed his wedding because his wedding was the same day that these sculptures had to be finished. And this is the thing I felt terrible about, man. I had to phone him and say, I can't. Oh, Jesus Christ. I'm just, I'm, I'm up to my... I can't be there. I need to be at this thing. Like, obviously, they had to rearrange their wedding because of the COVID thing. It's just the way the two of them landed. I, I felt terrible about it, man. Because, like, see this rule zero thing that I keep going on about, right? This rule zero thing's like... Uh, it's my family, but it's also the other people that I choose to call family. It's the other people that I choose to love. And this person, Sean, is a person that I love. He's my, he's my mate. He's been one of my best mates forever, right? And I was having to phone him up over a sculpture and go, I can't be there. And it was hard, man, right? But anyway, I managed to figure all, all it out. The whole thing, and it was and it was hard, man. There was times where I was just like, I can't, I can't do this. And I figured it out, and I got to go to Sean's wedding. Right, I did, which made me feel so much better, right? Because, and everything was delayed and everything got moved because of all the stuff, right? But I just heard this date in my head and I was like, I, I, this is, and the pressure built up to the point where it, poof, I had to go somewhere. And it just came out as anxiety. It came out as panic and all that sort of stuff. But eventually I got to the point where I was like, I, stop thinking about this as if it's important. Because it's not, it's not important. No one will die if you don't make these sculptures. No one will die. There is no one sitting there right now going, if he doesn't make these sculptures, then that's me. I'm going to snuff it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So from that, I was like, break it down into stages. Stage one, get the poles in. Today's the day that the poles go in and there's a rainbow out. See? That's a sign from the universe that these poles are going to go in. Chris came up, good dump. Stage two, get Davy to make the, the jellyfish. Some mushrooms, man. Stage three, fit all the lights, fit all the LEDs, fit all the batteries, fit all the solar panels. Final stage, get the jellyfish from the ground on top of the poles, that's it. Right now, those jellyfish are sitting in there, in that unit. So I don't even know if I've completed this thing yet. But I can see it. I can see it in my head. There was a point where I could not envision it. One of the other things I learned halfway through this was this is how much I, I care about this. Like, I, I really do care about it. Because this is all I've ever wanted to do is just make stuff, make mad things. That's it. And this is the first time anyone's ever trusted me to make a mad thing. As mad as this, right? I've done mad things before, but this is the maddest. This is the thing where it's like, I don't know if I'll push this through. I don't know if I'll be able to convey this idea in such a way where anyone will let me make it. And they said yes, and I was like, I can't not do this. I can't not do this thing. Because if I don't, I don't know if I'll ever get it again. That, that was, <laughs> that was it. That's what was inside my head this whole time. Was like, if I don't do this, then I don't know if I'll ever get the chance again to do something like this. And if I do this and I do it right, then someone else will see it and someone else will go, that guy, get that guy, that guy can do something like this or he can make something mad. That's it. That's it, right? And the other thing is this. See this box, what I've got inside this box, this whole what I see in my head when I listen to I Am The Walrus, that's the maddest thing I've ever came up with. Bar none. This is the maddest thing I've ever came up with. Now, if I manage to get this jellyfish idea, having no idea how to do it, never done it before, never worked with a welder or a fabricator, never even wired a solar panel, never put a pole in the ground, never used any sort of machinery, never even had a conversation with a structural engineer, any of that stuff, any of it, right? If I can get that thing there from my head onto a bit of paper, into the ground where I can actually touch it and I can actually see it then I can do this
That was it. That's why it was so hard. Because it felt like everything was on the line. Everything. That's what it felt like. And I had to keep telling myself that it wasn't. Right? I had to keep telling myself that it's like, no, no one's taking anything off you if you can't do this. But I just couldn't. I just, I didn't want to lose, man. It's not over yet. It's not over. Right? We give things meaning. Everything's meaningless. And we give it meaning. That pressure that I was feeling doesn't actually exist. I was giving it meaning. This was worth the risk. I was a point where I thought, how am I going to pay for this if it doesn't happen? Do you know what I mean? Like, there was that bit, and I was like, I just need to figure it out, man. <laughs> you just need to figure it out. There's stuff. There's, there's always a way, right? It's just money. Like, imagine I phoned up the people who actually allowed me to do this, and I go, look, see if this doesn't work out. How much of this money do I need to give you back? <laughs> Can you imagine having that conversation? Like, I couldn't have that conversation. I just had to swallow that bit and just keep plodding through. And that's the other thing I was struggling with that I said in the summer video, where I was like, this is all I've ever wanted to do and now I'm moaning about it. Like, I had this sense of guilt. It's not the hardest thing I've ever had to do, but as far as, like, walrus chasing goes, it's the hardest thing I've ever had to do. But, like, I need to thank... I can't... It wasn't all me. That's the other thing. Like, it isn't all me. I didn't go and do all these things. Like, if it wasn't for Drew, Davey, Hannah, Karen at Rig, all the people at Sustrans and Inverclyde, the, the funders, has not just been me. Guys at Yardworks who managed, who talked me through the iPath, guys told me and then put me in contact with King Listy, who done could do that bit for me. Like, the, do you know what I mean? Like, there was all these people, and I've probably forgot folk as well, and I don't mean it out of badness, right? It just, there was so many people that helped to get to this point. To get to this point where I'm sitting in this chair telling this story, and the stuff's still, the stuff's through there, and I'll, I'll be sitting in the back of the van to watch these, to see them come on. And when that happens, It's done. It's, f it's finished. I, I don't, and I done it. <laughs> and the and the other thing I learned is I need to properly believe I can do this stuff, which is what the switch is all about. If I don't believe I can do it, then it definitely won't happen. If I do believe I can do it, then I've got a chance. Because if I can will these sculptures into existence from here into my book, into the universe, then I can get this into my book, into the universe. If you, so you can get me at Mr. Tragic Oara all, on all the socials and stuff like that. Feed the algorithm, leave me a comment, like I like anything. It all helps to beat the algorithm, which is one of the villains I've got in this bigger story that I'm trying to tell. I don't know what the next thing's going to be, like genuinely, because I am taking time now. Like I'm taking time. I've learned to not watch the number. Like doing this has made me realise the number doesn't help. I'm not looking at the numbers anymore. I'm going to take some time to work on this. This is my first draft. This is my manuscript. See all the stuff I, I done to get through this? Like the the mindset stuff and the way I think and all of these different things. It's going on this. And when I've actually got it concrete, I'll start properly putting it together and getting it out, right? But that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go work in this for a bit. And I'll just be doing the, I'll be doing other stuff when I when I get it. Because that this opportunity is is giving me some resources that I need to put into this. So I was, the same way I took the resources for the first one and put it into here, into the space, right? Now I've got the space and I've got a wee bit of resources that I can put into this. So next time, there will be a next time. Like, see now that it's all done? See now that, like, I can see them and, like, we put them in and I spent that day making sure everything was all right and all that? There is no way I'm not doing that again. Like, there's... <laughs> There is no way, right? Because, like, I've done it. Do you know what I mean? Like, it, I mean, it was, it was, it was hard, but, like, I've I done it. And it's only now that it's been there for, like, four or five days, and I've been up, and I've seen it, and everything's working, and, like, I, I'm, I, I'm doing it again. Like, I'll definitely do it again. It needs to be the right one. Like, I don't, this isn't the only thing I want to do, but if the opportunity arises again, like, I, I am, I am on it. <laughs> like, it is, it is happening. But if you'd asked me that 
three months ago, it would have been a it would have been a no. But it's not a no now. It's a it'll be yes. Like if it comes up again, and I've got a few ideas. I've I've written some stuff down, right? So I so that's it. So yeah, thank you very much. Uh, and and next time, graft. <laughs>